Hey guys, uh, welcome to this video where we're going to do a deep dive into surface properties and parameters in Grasshopper and Rhino. And this is really, you know, core fundamental pieces of knowledge that you need to know if you want to develop as a computational parametric designer. Understanding this is going to save you a huge amount of time because it will give you the ability to kind of holistically think about what you're doing when you're developing your scripts. And it will give you processes and skills that you can use in every type of piece of design that you're trying to achieve. So I also did a video on curve properties and also there is one on untrimmed surfaces versus trim surfaces. So it's worth taking a look at these as well just to you know fill in the blanks about some of the some of the things as well. Let's um, let's jump straight in. I have this script set up here, which we're going to go through just to you know, explain a few different pieces and parts about you know, surfaces, how they're created, their properties, and um, how we can use what we're learning, or use what we know to to create much more complex uh, paneling, setting out, and understanding of surfaces. I'll start at the beginning because this is all this is doing is creating our initial curve. Curve is just using this interpolate, and it's created from a few points. So. So, uh, and those points are created just from a, a setting out a series of numbers. And I also have the Z heights here. So I have quite nice, you know, control over this curve and ultimately this will, you know, controls the surface. So, you know, if you, you followed any of my, my approach or my workflow in Grasshopper before, then you'll know the way that I suggest setting up scripts or the way I, my workflow for everything really is that, you know, complexity increases throughout the script. So we'll start with the most simple setting out, which is this most simple object element, which is just numbers, you know, very easy to compute. You know, numbers create points, points create curves, and curves create surfaces. This is the workflow, and this is how you know, we keep our scripts really efficient because you know, we have that same workflow all the time and complexity increases. We may sometimes, you know, have to devolve information as well, like explode a surface to find a certain edge, but we're always in the world of these simple elements, and this keeps it really quick for Grasshopper. So uh, I have three different ways to create a surface here, and but the the, the reason why we have is just to explain you know, how these different surfaces and different components compute and the differences between them. So we're, we're going to just quickly look at the loft surface. So I basically am taking my curve, I'm moving it in the Y direction a certain amount, and I am lofting a surface between them. And you can see here, I have what's known as the domain. And if you watch the curve properties video, you'll know that, you know, a curve that has a length. So we have the surface domain here, which is being denoted into two coordinate values or two values, sorry, two domain values. And we have the U and the V. And the way to really start thinking about surfaces is very, very much like a curve, but in two dimensions. This is how Rhino and Grass understand surfaces. So along this bottom edge, we have our, our, our original curve that we put in this one. And this is our V direction, zero to 300. And along the straight edge, which is being defined uh, just from this loft, because they're parallel with each other and, and perpendicular to each other. So we get straight line. This is our U direction. You can see when I change the U value, the, the domain updates and it's uh, is one for one. It's, you know, the U zero at this bottom edge to 58 in the upper edge. So, you know, this domain really is the, the dimensions. And I use this term loosely, the dimensions of the surface, because we would instinctively think, okay, well, this is how long the surface is. And in this case, it is it's zero to 86. But we're going to do a bit of analysis now on the V direction, zero to 300, because we would assume that our curve length is 300 as well. So let's take a look. I'm just going to reconnect this back in and yeah, we'll go from our surface here. So again, we have our domain, it's the U, the U and the V. Um, I can use this dimensions. This tool gives us the domain, get the approximate dimensions of the surface. And approximate is an interesting word there because it surely should be definite. It should be, you know, the surface is this long in the V direction, or the U direction. And so if we do a bit of analysis on this, we will take our lofted surface, we are gonna deconstruct the breadth. So we're gonna find all the edges, there's four edges, two straight ones, two curvy ones. I'm going to um, just item out the, these two edges and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna analyze the length. Uh, the length of my straight one is 86. You know, this aligns with my U direction. This makes sense. This is where we move the curve. This is, you know, and this is how the loft distance between the curves for the loft. However, when we look at our curve here, this is our, um, this is the curve taken from our, our deconstructed breadth and we measure the length, we get 207. So the actual, and if I bake this as well, uh, we can just do that quickly and I look at this. It's, it is, I can measure it. It's 207 millimeters long. And so that is very different to 300 
measure that we have here in the parameters or the, the V direction of our surface, the domain of the surface. And so what's going on here? This, this, this is where things start getting quite confusing because you're, well, okay, why are those two numbers different? And it really, really comes down to how this law has interpreted that curve and created that so, so you know we get the we get the domain from the loft here we're gonna do a we'll do another one now a different using a different surface tool just to show this so we'll take our curve i'm going to find the start point of it so i'm going to evaluate the curve at its zero parameter so zero is always going to be the start and i'm going to just draw a line in the y direction and we're going to use some surface so some surface is basically in the exact same surface as our loft surface here yet if i compare these um these two numbers the domain that we get out i get uh, along the v direction i have two months zero to 200 so along this curve direction I'm zero to 200. and then along my line direction i have zero to one i mean what this is telling us already is that you know this is curve properties is really confusing because it really comes down to the, the the curves that you've used and the components that you used as well we'll do this one more time with our revolve surface as well so we have our curve here i'm just revolving it around our around our central axis i have control over the upper and lower angles and what you can see in this one and, and how this revolution is working is that even if i change i have zero to 200 it's actually the same as the domain in the sum surface as i, as I change these none of these values uh, you know the domain actually doesn't change in any in any way you know it's still zero to two times pi and and so these properties these domains the the parameters of the of the surfaces again it comes down to components that we're using and and how they're calculating those surfaces so this throws up some problems because you know we we want to understand and when we want methodologies that are repeatable we we need we need everything to be working the same way all the time and so one superpower that we have in grasshopper is the ability to uh, what's known as reparameterize surfaces and if you've watched the curve parameters the curve properties video they we can also reparameterize curves so the you know reparameterizing a curve we will understand the start to be zero the end of the curve to be one so this could be this curve the start will be zero the end will be one so then it doesn't and by reparameterize it doesn't matter what the curve length actually is it could be one millimeter or one mile or one kilometer it doesn't matter 0.5 is per, as a parameter will always be dead center and so we can do the exact same thing with surfaces so if i come to my little area again i'm going to right click and i'm going to reparameterize the, the surface so now i get the uh the dimensions again which are still 86 to 300 but my my domain here my surface domain has been reset to be understood but from zero to one in the u and zero to one in the v um it hasn't changed any of these values the actual dimensions uh, the actual lengths it's just changed the domain of the surface and how grasshopper can compute from then on we can do this for all of our surfaces so it doesn't matter of the surface if it's curved if it's you know, if it's completely flat we can reparameterize a surface to be between zero and one so we understand its coordinate system along the u direction to be zero to one and v direction to be zero to one and i'm repeating this a lot because it's really important and and it's really really helpful once you get your head around it. let's check out why that this is important so i'm taking this surface i'm reparameterizing it this is just my my lofted surface i'm reparameterizing it so it's between zero and one and i'm putting a evaluating the surface at a uv coordinate so the coordinate to evaluate the surface and i'm just adding a little sphere to to that location and so i have this um this point set up here so my uv so my zero zero point of my surface is this bottom corner it's the start of both curves and where they join if i go to zero to one in the u direction i'm going to go up one axis if i go zero to one up the y direction which is actually the v of the the surface coordinate system i'll go up the other axis if i put 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 i'm going to get the basically the dead center of the, the surface the center point of the surface as a kind of uv system or uv coordinate system we could and key thing to re to understand here is that the topology of the surface doesn't matter we'll work on this um, revolved surface and i'll keep it kind of rectangular looking and we're just going to switch to this md slider so it's basically doing the exact same thing as our construct point it's just it's a multi-directional slider it's got two directions to it to its value so zero zero in this corner is 
zero zero in uh, on our surface and we can choose we can actually choose any point on the surface and we'll go to the full extent and that makes sense when it's kind of when the, our revolved surface is kind of rectangular like this but if i increase this uh, you know things start getting a little you know it might be a little confusing but you, we can still imagine any surface even if it's revolved like this even if it's curved to be to be understood between zero and one in the u of v so zero zero i have that corner again if i go up one axis i go to the other you know the other edge and imagine it as a rectangular or a square plane of existence that we can set a point on. And again, big, big note of this is it doesn't matter what the topology of the surface is. As long as it's an untrimmed surface, we can always do this. This gives us some, um, you know, some leverage. And because we're just setting this point by creating some simple numbers with this, with this multi-directional slider. So what if I created some complex set of numbers? So instead of, I've got my, I'm just creating a point again, so similar to this one above here, but instead of putting one number in, I'm creating a range of numbers. So from zero to one, I've got put 10 divisions, and this is creating my X coordinate. So I've got zeros up the, say X coordinate, the U coordinate. So I've got zeros up the up the V and the, the range of numbers up the U. And if we use this as our, as our input of our surface body weight, we can evaluate multiple points along the surface. We could actually change this to be the Y and we'll go over this, you know, this axis. If we, again, we'll change the, the surface topology, you know, this is exactly the same. We're spreading out those, you know, those points along the U and the V. If we put this into both the U and the V, we'll get uh, essentially a coordinate that's kind of like going from one corner to the opposite corner. So in this revolved surface, it creates a kind of spiral around. It's creating a spiral of points that are along the surface. Because these are, yeah, these are just going from one corner to the other of our coordinate system. And if we, if we basically graph one of these, we can create list mapping and how these X numbers are mapping against the Y. Just from simple numbers set out from zero to one, we can start setting out points and we start setting out a grid of points along the surface or over this surface. Again, it doesn't matter of its topology. We'll do this. This will work if it's rectangular, square, or curved. You know, the, the way that the surface is, uh, is understood as a coordinate system is always the same, regardless of scale, because we've reparameterized. This becomes really helpful when we start to do more complex things like paneling. So if we, I'm just gonna delete this for a second. Um, so if we take our surface and we are going to, we're gonna extract a portion of the surface using a tool called isotrim and isotrim it this is uh, it says extract an isoparametric subset of a surface and so because this is reparameterized it's not doing anything at the moment we're, we're still understanding it to be zero to one in the u zero to one in the v but if i say decrease this one so we're understanding this surface from zero to 0 0.5 we're extracting zero to 0 0.5 in the u and extracting zero to 0 0.5 in the v we can actually get a smaller version of the panel you know and we can extract a section of it we doesn't even have to start from zero we could increase these we could actually even use this to just get this near the boundaries we could create nearly a frame and inset our surface slightly so we can create kind of panel gaps and things like this again i'm going to keep doing this because it's important the topology of the surface doesn't matter you know we're still zero, zero to one is, is is the key thing here and we can select a surface uh, or a extract say a part of that surface so we're going to do this again but with with two surfaces so what if we did this I'll just make all these a bit lower. You know, so just by adding multiple different domains, we can, we're right now extracting like two different surfaces from here. And so if I look in this, this D input, we've basically just got two different complex domains in the U and the V. And these are defining a coordinate system that we want to extract from our main surface. So you're like, ah, okay, from zero to one in the U and the V, we can use it to create a more complex square domain rather than a linear domain to extract a part of the surface. So it's like, ah, okay, well, that's cool. So what if we, we, we could do this again, but we'll take our surface, reparameterize again, zero to one. All of these tools, actually, I should point out that this construct domain square, um, everything is in mathematics. So mathematics and domain we have these construct domain squared. So different ways of creating uh, square domains. And they're all above our linear domains as well. So these square domains are really helpful for surfaces. Um, and we also, this this is one that we're going to take a look at now, divide domain square. Because we can take a take our lofted surface, reparameterize it, and we're going to take the domain and divide it up. And so it's going to understand the U and the V as between 0 to 1. And it's going to divide this equally. It's almost like taking the using the divide curve. And we're going to extract and, and create some paneling. So we've got basically 10 divisions in the U and or, or 
whatever we choose and 10 on the fee create this um you know complex panel and again the the reason this is so powerful is that it's you know they're just numbers between zero to one very simple it's uh, or simple but the uh, conceptually quite simple when once we're using reparameterized geometry whether if we're doing a flat facade you know we can we can change our divisions just between these zero uh, numbers between zero to one uh, i mean this is this is creating sorry this is creating the amount of divisions but the the way it's dividing it is creating numbers that are only ever spread between zero to one and yeah it doesn't matter if it's flat curved whatever we um, this is how we can start breaking up our complex surfaces into smaller surfaces so then we can do things with them and develop more complex pieces of parametric geometry and the last one i wanted to to show you was again this is you know understanding zero to one and you and me, and we've got iso trim and all i'm doing is creating a range of numbers so this is a range between zero to one zero to one we're running these through a path mapper which are essentially the range creates a very uniform division of numbers so it's zero to one divided into 20 sections so they're very uniform what the graph mapper does is it understands that we're working between zero to one it maps these numbers across the bottom projects these onto the curve and then projects them uh, again onto the opposite side to read a new number so uh, these numbers get Get adjusted by the graph mapper to be this more so we go from uniform numbers to a very non-uniform setting of numbers because of this curve that we have in our graph mapper and we use this to create consecutive domains we can do this both for the u and the v and we graphed again and i'm going to do a whole video on complex domains this isn't as much as enough as an explanation but the idea is that we can take our surface and rather than divide it equally we can divide it using these really complex domains that are derived from simple setting out of non-uniform numbers in between zero and one this is how we do really beautifully complex parametric handling again really really trying to hit this uh, this point home that you know it doesn't matter if this is a flat panel or a curved panel topology of a surface and we're, the way we understand its properties and parameters is the same zero to one in the u zero to one in the v and and so yes this is largely everything i wanted to cover in this video probably quite a lot very quickly but i would urge you to really take a look at reparameterizing surfaces using isotrim to divide these up is a really great method of creating more complex geometry and and doing lots of interesting things with it so yes i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it's helpful leave some comments please that would be really helpful for me to you know to understand and how helpful this was follow our content follow our videos and um, there's lots more coming out in the next few weeks and months uh, that'll help you really step up and your computational design thinking and your parametric design skills using grasshopper so thanks thanks again guys and i'll see you on the next video